Today, we're talking about Ex Libre and how it's getting released for Fedora, the Linux distribution, under Coper or COPR, the extra software repositories for Fedora. We're going to be talking about all of this and how you can try Ex Libre today as we've seen more developments and movement of this X server fork. X Libre is a fork of the aging Xorg server by a former contributor in Rico who was originally removed from the freedesktop.org after a conduct issue, which ended up creating this project here called X11 Libre. X11 Libre saw its first major release, which was X Libre 25 on June 21st, 2025, and has received a few more releases since then. The idea here, at least the our mission statement, the ex Libre contributors strive to clean up and strengthen the existing code base while maintaining backward compatibility to make X11 a viable choice for the future. Another goal is to actively enhance the functionality of the X server and its drivers. We also take care of the improvements to the Xorg server that have been unreleased for several years or were made to X Wayland only. Our decision making is based on merit and our active community keen to bring X forward. Then they talk about their achievements. Since June 5th, 2025, there have been more than 30 contributors, they claim, and released numerous code cleanups, the X namespace extension for separating X clients and backported the June 2025 XORD CVE fixes. Together, we've integrated tear free by default and allowed enabling atomic mode setting. XNest was ported to XCB per ABI driver directories were introduced and X quartz has been added to our build jobs, which is really cool because they're actually making headway here and you can actually switch to X Libre, but they've made it easier now on Fedora. Initially, it wasn't taken too well with a Fedora proposal as it was only days old as a change proposal was made in Fedora 43 to replace Xorg's X11 server with X Libre, or at least give an alternative. And we're going to review that proposal just a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about the initial X Libre 25 Summer Solstice release. 25 was the major release of X Libre, which aimed at major code cleanup, security fixes, and new features. The key features in X Libre 25 include X namespace extensions that isolate apps in different security domains for better sandboxing, X Nest ported XCB, which removes dependency on legacy X Lib, and per driver directories, which support multiple driver versions for smoother distribution upgrades. And we can see the release announcement release was made Saturday, June 21st, 2025. So where are we now? What version have we gotten to? Let's talk about that as we're now on the 0 .009 release. That means there have been nine minor releases since then. These releases include things like screen cleanups, fixing builds, swapping logic, which honestly are making decent strides as we see bug fixes, portability improvements, build and workflow improvements, more documentation, and better security improvements. All good to see as initially there was a rocky start around the Ex Libre announcement. It wasn't because of the technical side of things. It's really more about the tone, the context of Enrico's conflict with the Xorg and Red Hat IBM ecosystems. Just a little background, Enrico was a very active developer to Xorg and Xserver in early 2024 to 2025 with hundreds of commits. Some of those commits were merged and rejected or blocked in which Enrico argued that it was Red Hat affiliated maintainers who said that he was breaking things. After this friction escalated, Enrico claimed that he was censored and banned from the desktop.org under no merit and he framed the fork as an act of resistance against corporate control and maintainership of X server. So that early messaging really set the tone for this project as not everyone agreed with this and since then the rhetoric seems to have died down quite a bit which is good because now we're back focused on the actual project itself and I would say the hype around this project has died down since then but it really hasn't. Shortly after this latest news was released a lot of people started talking about the adoption to be pushed to other distributions and desktop environments, but we're going to be getting into that a little bit more. But before we do, take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also, make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. Let's talk about when the Ex Libre proposal went south to bring it into Fedora. As despite Ex Libre only being a few days old, a Fedora 43 X Libre change proposal was filed to replace Xorg's X11 X server 
say that 10 times fast, with the Ex Libre implementation, which was wild. Kevin was the one to make this change proposal, and it was very quickly withdrawn. The community reaction to this discussion was pretty wild. As we can see here on the forums, the post was met by a lot of criticism, which I'm not gonna get into again. As I've done this in a different video when this announcement was first made, we wanna get to the fact that it's been in introduced in the extra repositories, but basically people were saying it was too immature, at most a couple weeks old, a single maintainer with controversial background was running it, potential licensing issues and violations, and of course, just the lack of stability and trust. The overall suggestion was to maintain Ex Libre in parallel for three to four Fedora releases to first prove maturity. That caused Kevin, the proposer, to withdraw the change after recognizing the strong backlash after only about a day or two. He emphasized respecting the community consensus and avoiding a wasted effort. And this all raised big questions. What happens when the legacy infrastructure like XOR goes unmaintained? Can Ex Libre earn trust over time or is it just an added fragmentation of the Ex Org server? And what's the tension going to look like between the, the technical compatibility of this new forked X server versus the community trust in the leadership by Enrico? While there have been some Linux distributions already announcing X Libre for testing, like Artix Linux, there really hasn't been too much movement as of late. But regardless, the Fedora 43 change proposal to add X Libre was withdrawn. The reasoning, again, by Kevin was twofold. I have always argued that changes that are overwhelmingly rejected by the community should not be approved by Fesco, so it would be very hypocritical if I attempted to push through over the almost entirely negative feedback. I stand by my positions and I also apply them to myself. And number two, at this point, I believe that there's no chance of being approved by Fesco for Fedora 43, so I do not want to waste everyone's time by continuing this discussion signed off Kevin, which you could respect the fact that Kevin realized this and actively pulled the proposal himself. That's all great, but where are we today? We're gonna get into that, and if you wanna level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all available at SavvyNick.com. Get them with new flashcards today, as now we have another announcement. X Libre X Server packages for Fedora 42, 3, and 4 are now available in a special Coper for testing. Some of you might be asking, what is Coper? Coper is the extra software repository for Fedora, free open source software that is harder to include in Fedora, usually because it developed in a way that makes it difficult to package while implementing the Fedora packaging guidelines, is temporarily provided in extra Coper repository. All that Coper stands for is cool other package repository, and it's equivalent to things like Ubuntu's PPAs. Users can enable the Coper repo with a single command and install software that isn't available or yet updated in the main Fedora repositories. And it's fairly easy to install a package with, with the default package manager, DNF. So why is this a big deal? Well, it's a big deal to people who want to use Ex Libre on Fedora, as it's now available in the cool other package repositories. As our friend Kevin here has now released Ex Libre to Fedora users. This gives people a one-click testing solution if they're using Fedora. Normally, trying X Libre would mean cloning the GitHub repo, compiling the X server, rebuilding compatible drivers, and replacing Xorg manually. A very risky process. With Coper, Fedora users could simply enable the repo and select upgrade which would instantly switch them over from Xorg to X Libre. It makes sense for users who are testing X Libre in real-world environments without having to do heavy setup. The announcement here was made by Kevin saying, hi everyone, I have packaged the X Libre X server from the X11 Libre X server GitHub project and the compatible drivers, the corresponding driver from the GitHub X11 Libre for each X driver shipped in Fedora. For Fedora 42 branched, Fedora 43 and Rawhide 44, they are available here at this Coper. And here's how easy it would be to switch X org now to X Libre, three commands, with an upgrade. At this time, this is completely untested. Tester feedback is very welcome. I might play around with it in a VM soon and produce some screenshots, but right now my main priority was to get it out there for all the interested users. It is not currently planned to get this into Fedora proper. If there is sufficient interest in my Coper, I might have another try at making this happen for some future Fedora release, but right now there is stiff 
opposition. As we've already covered some of the reasoning behind that. For the package to land in Fedora proper, it must go through a change proposal process, which Kevin has already tried. That was definitely a no-go. It also requires buy-in from the FESCO, Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, and there has to be a large consensus among Fedora maintainers and contributors to actually add it into Fedora. The early attempt to add Xlibre to Fedora 43 shows that it was overwhelmingly rejected as it's immature, it lacks multiple maintainers and an organizational background, it has potential licensing issues, there's already trust problems with the lead maintainer Enrico, and it risks breakage and instability in Fedora's core desktop environment, all making a big rejection from Fedora to allow Ex Libre in the official repos, at least for now. There's gonna be a long standing uphill battle for Ex Libre to make it to any significant Linux distribution. Coper is one of the ways that's going to provide a safe side channel for testing and seeing if all those things that I just mentioned will improve over the coming years. We'll see how long this project can make it. As Xorg is a huge, ancient, and messy code base, X server dates back over 30 years and has countless patches layered on it over time. Much of the code is obscure, fragile, and poorly documented. There's very few developers nowadays working on it, and forking it means inheriting all these complex problems with no guarantee that you're gonna get other people to work on it. It's gonna take a large, experienced team to actually keep moving things forward. Even though the Ex Libre project believes it can do this, there's going to be massive challenges ahead. As the kernel APIs evolve quickly, and NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD all bringing in their own little quirks, there are just too many developers focused on a Wayland first roadmap. One person is not going to be able to make a fundamental change here, at least in my opinion, if Enrico can get a bunch of people excited about the project and working on it, claiming that we currently have over 30 developers working on the Ex Libre movement, we're going to see the tide won by the Wayland momentum as it has already pretty much made X11 into a zombie project. There's going to be immense testing and quality assurance burden with Ex Libre as well. It's just technically too big, too fragile, and too dependent on hardware vendors and kernel evolution to be able to make it. Socially, the project has a lack of trust in its leadership, an alienated upstream, and no real big distributions or backers, at least as of now. We'll probably see a few niche distros pull it in for a little bit, as I believe this is going to only have a small hobbyist following. But that's just my thoughts on it. Hopefully, they do succeed. It would be nice to have a replacement, or at least something aside, X11, as X11 is still everywhere. It's in remote desktops, industrial machines, embedded systems, and many of those apps were never able to port over to Wayland, and won't ever port over to Wayland. X Wayland helps, but it's not 100% compatible. And having a drop-in replacement for X11 keeps these critical legacy workflows alive. Xorg, again, is barely maintained, and we only see minimal patching to mostly fix occasional security bug fixes, and there's really no modern hardware development going on. For all those reasons, it'd be nice to see Ex Libre succeed. Regardless, it seems like, at least at this moment, Enrico and the entire project is full steam ahead. Ex Libre is showing signs of fast-moving project maintenance, as there is high active constant commits coming in, mainly by Enrico. As we see, this is just August 24th, all the commits that were made. There are actually other people also contributing, so that's nice to see, but there's a long way to go here. With frequent releases now, there are actually some decent ones that address the CVEs, even quicker than X11 can, as they're really trying to keep the momentum going. Regardless of the momentum, I wanna hear from you and where you think this project is going. Is it gonna fail? Is it gonna make it? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm glad to be back. After about a week hiatus, I've been working on some other projects, which I'm gonna be showing off soon. So you wouldn't wanna miss those videos. Don't forget to subscribe below. Smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.